Hello, listeners. I'm Bob Harkins, and I'd like to welcome you to our very first Raised Short. We're doing these shorts to give listeners a less formal but still informative episode that is meant to serve two purposes. First, it fills the gap between the feature episodes. I know if you're a hardcore podcast listener, the gap might feel a little bigger than you're used to, so we're looking to fill that gap. Secondly, is meant to be complementary to those feature episodes and give a little more depth to the topic at hand. Our first short tackles something you're going to be hearing a lot about over the course of Season 1, CTE. CTE is short for Chronic Traumatic Encephalopathy. It's quite a mouthful, and don't think I haven't spent some time working on pronouncing it correctly. Hopefully I am. CTE is a degenerative brain disease that is found in people who have a history of repetitive brain trauma, which oftentimes ends up being athletes or members of the military. If you hit your head on a door jam when you were 12, don't worry. You would have had to do that many, many, many times to be at risk for CTE. Now, I said in episode one that CTE was discovered by Dr. Bennett Omalu, and I'd like to apologize because that wasn't quite right. Dr. Omalu was the first to discover CTE in a football player, which he did when Hall of Fame lineman Mike Webster ended up on his autopsy table back in 2002. But CTE actually goes way back to the 1920s, when it was found to affect boxers and was known by another name, Dementia Pugilistica, or Punch Drunk Syndrome. What Omalu did was bring it into the spotlight as a potentially major health issue for football players. Since that's the most popular sport in America, it's a pretty big deal. What happens with CTE? Well, when someone, such as a football player, suffers repeated blows to the head, what can happen is tangles of this abnormal protein called tau can build up and kill off nerve cells in the brain. Now the buildup of the tau doesn't happen right away, but years or sometimes even decades after the hits occur. And once it surfaces, it gets progressively worse over time. A couple of misconceptions to clear up about CTE. First of all, a lot of people think you get it from concussions, but research has shown it doesn't take a concussive hit to do it. It's all about the repetitive blows to the head, whether they result in concussions or not that can lead to CTE. Another misconception is that you have to play 10, 20 years in the NFL to get CTE. Also not true. CTE has been found in athletes as young as 17 and in kids who never even played beyond youth football. So kind of a scary thought, right? Now to the symptoms. There are four stages of CTE. The first stage is marked by confusion, trouble paying attention, dizziness, headaches, those kinds of things. Stage 2 symptoms include memory loss, poor judgment, and mood swings, so uh, behavioral issues. Stage 3 heightens all of these symptoms and often also brings on aggression, trouble staying organized, apathy, and the person can sometimes even become suicidal. At stage 4, victims develop severe memory loss and perhaps even dementia. And there are some issues with CTE. One huge problem is that there is, so far there is no reliable way to diagnose it in a living person. You have to cut up the brain and put it under the microscope to see if a person has CTE. This makes it, of course, impossible to treat and there is no cure. However, symptoms of CTE such as depression or anxiety can be treated individually. Another issue is it's really difficult to determine just how widespread the problem is in football. There's a lot of evidence that football players are prone to getting it from repetitive hits, but the studies so far are clearly biased because they've been focused on the brains of ex-players who were already showing symptoms while they were alive. Even Dr. Ann McKee, who has probably examined more brains for CTE than anybody, has said that an autopsy series is terribly biased. In order to do an unbiased study, What researchers would need to do is examine a wide cross-section of living brains, and that just isn't possible at this time, at least not yet. Also, some researchers believe there might be certain genetic qualities that make a person more susceptible to CTE. To wrap up, there's a lot of work ahead for researchers to determine how widespread the issue of CTE is in football. At this point, it's sort of a situation where there is a ton of smoke. There clearly is a problem there clearly is a fire. We just don't know how big and widespread that fire is yet. Thanks for listening to this Raised Short. I hope it helps you better understand what CTE is and will make the rest of this series more enjoyable to listen to. For more, check us out on RaisedSports.com. We're also on Twitter. We're on Facebook. 
And if you really want to support our work, become a member at patreon.com slash raised sports. For as little as a dollar a month, you can receive special member benefits and be eligible for the occasional prizes. Thanks for listening. Have a great day. Thank you.